What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to create this strong password generator with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this strong password generator. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this neat little password generator, a strong password generator. And you can see you can enter how many characters you want. You can generate a strong password. We can change this if we want, whatever you want. And you see it creates different characters and different uh, letters, uppercase, lowercase, numbers. You know, we've got uh, parentheses here. And we've got this setup to where we can highlight all this and copy it, control C, or we can come down here to copy the clipboard and do it like that. And then we can, you know, paste these things in using regular paste functions or right click paste, whatever. Uh, but we'll show you how to do all that in this video. So I'm using the sublime text editor in the Git bash terminal as always. And you can find a link to the code for this video in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist with going on 200 Kinter videos by now. So check that out if you haven't already. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. And the only difference I have is I put this from random import rand int. And we've done this lots of times throughout this channel, use random numbers. And this will just allow us to generate a random integer, integers being whole numbers, five, 27, 106. So why random numbers? Well, let's head over to a web browser really quick. And I pulled up this ASCII table and this just has basic ASCII, right? So with ASCII, they turn numbers into, you know, different things. So for instance, if we called the ASCII number 125, you can see down here, that will return this parentheses. When we call the ASCII number 43, that will return the plus sign. When we call ASCII number 100, that returns a lowercase d. So Python allows us to call ASCII using the CHR function, it stands for characters, CHR, character. So what we're gonna do is generate a random number between some set of numbers and then convert that into the ASCII thing, right? So if we look through here, we see these null, we don't want that, this tab, we definitely don't want that right? All these other weird things. So we come down to like 32 and we see space. We don't really want a space in our password. So I'm just going to get rid of all of the stuff above 32. So we want to start with number 33. And if we come down through and kind of look through all these, these look, these all look good, 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 good. We get down to 127 delete. Well, we don't want delete in our password because delete is just a blank space again. So let's go, let's stop at 126. So what we need to do is generate a random number between 33 and 126 and then convert it into ASCII. And that's really all there is to it. So we can do that with rand int. So let's just call this um, my password for now. And this is gonna be a random integer between 33 and 126. So this will generate a random integer. So this could generate 33, it could generate 126, it could generate anything in between. 42. So once we have that number, we can then convert that into an ASCII character by using the CHR function. So I'm just going to wrap this whole thing into the CHR function. Now this will generate some ASCII character, right? Between 33 and 126, and then it will return the actual ASCII character. That's what the CHR function does. So really, that's all we have to do. All we have to do now is create a form that says, how many of these do you want? loop through it, generating that number of ASCII characters, smooshing them all together, and then outputting them onto the screen. So pretty simple. So let's just rough in our app here. So I'm gonna create a label frame. I'm just gonna call it LF, and that's gonna be a label frame. We wanna put it in root, and we want the text to equal how many characters. So this is gonna go right above the entry box where we can put in how many characters we want our password to be. How long do we want it to be? Five characters, 20 characters, 100 characters in length. How many do we want? So, all right, so now let's LF dot pack this guy and let's give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. So I guess I'll comment uh, label frame. <laughs> so now let's uh, create entry box to designate number of characters. 
So let's just call this my entry. And this is going to be an entry box. And we want to put it in LF, that label frame, right? And we want, let's give this a font of, let's go Helvetica. And let's make this pretty big. So let's go like 24. And then let's go my underscore entry dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 and a pad X of 20. So it kind of gives it some space inside of this label frame. So, okay, that looks good. So now we want an entry box for our returned password. Why do we want an entry box? We could just flash this up on the screen as a label, but I want to be able to drag my mouse across it to copy it. And you can't copy a label, but you can copy an entry box. So we're going to create an entry box and then we're going to make it invisible so it doesn't look like an entry box. So it'll still look like a label, but we'll be able to drag and copy it. So just a little hack. And I did a video on this a while back. So I'm going to call this password entry. And this is going to be an entry box. We want to put it in root. And we want the text for now to be nothing. We'll update it later. We want the font to equal, again, let's go Helvetica. And let's make this size four. And for now, I'm going to keep it visible just so we can see it. So let's go PW underscore entry dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. Okay, so let's create a frame for our buttons. So I'm just going to call this my frame. And it's going to be a frame. We want to put it in root. And let's go my underscore frame dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. Now let's create our buttons. So we want probably two buttons. And the first one is, uh, I don't know, we'll just call it my button to generate the password. So this is going to be a button. We want to put it in my underscore frame. We want the text to equal generate strong password. And then we want the command to equal new rand. So we're going to create a new random password every time we click this button. So we'll call the command new rand. We haven't created it yet, but we'll do that in just a second. So let's go my underscore button. And we want to dot grid this because we're going to put these two buttons next to each other. So let's put this in a row zero column equals zero. And let's give this a pad X of like 10 just to move it apart from the other button a little bit. So okay, we've got this new rand, let's come up here. And let's just define this real quick. So we don't forget and I'll just pass for now. Okay, so now, finally, the last thing we want is to copy this to clipboard. So I'm going to call this clip underscore button. And this is a button, we want to put it in my underscore frame, we want the text to equal copy to clipboard. And let's give this a command of I don't know, clipper, whatever. So we'll copy this. And again, we want to clip underscore button dot grid this guy, we want to put it in row zero and column equals one. And let's give this a pad x also of 10 to Know, push it apart from the other button a little bit. So, okay, finally, we've got this command clipper. So let's come up here and create that real quick. And let's just define clipper and pass for now. Okay, so we did a bunch of stuff. Let's save this and run it to make sure we didn't make a hash of all this. So I call this file password.py. So we're in our C GUI directory. So let's go Python password.py. And when we do, we see we get this nice little label frame. We can put how many characters we want. Here's where the, the password will be generated. So if we click this, nothing happens yet. But okay, generally, it's looking pretty good. So now we just need to create this functionality. So let's do the generate strong password thing first. So we've got our password entry, entry box, right? So the first thing we want to do is clear that. So if we click the button more than once, we want to clear whatever was in there. So let's go pw underscore entry dot delete. We want to delete from zero to end. And that's how we delete entry boxes. We've learned that before. So let's clear our entry box. Now let's get the password length. And I'm going to create a variable called password underscore length for this probably don't need to but it'll be a little cleaner. And what we want is my underscore entry dot get we want to get whatever we put in our my entry entry box, which is this guy right here, right? But we also want to make sure this is a number. So we want to convert it to an integer. So I'll just wrap this whole thing in the integer func function. So get password length and convert to integer. Again, integers are just whole numbers, four, six, 27. They're not 4.7 or 4.0, right? They're just four. So okay, 
we get our password length. Now let's create a variable to hold our password. And I'm just gonna call this my underscore password. Now we want to set this equal to nothing to start out with. So now let's loop through password length. So we say we want a password of 10 characters, so we need to loop through that. So to do that, I'm gonna create a for loop. I'm gonna go for x in, well, here's our password length, right? But we need to create a range. So let's go range of password length, right? So what this does is if we type 10 into the entry box, this will loop through 10 times, right? If we type 20 into the entry box, this will loop through 20 times. That's what range does. It creates a range from zero to 20, and then we can loop through it that many times. And each time we do that, we're gonna generate an X. So let's come down here and let's just grab this whole thing that we did earlier, copy this, bring it in here, and let's paste it. Instead of equals, we wanna go plus equal, right? Because we're gonna start out with nothing. We'll generate a random number between 33 and 126. Then we'll convert that to the character. Then we'll add that to this. So the first time it'll generate something and then the next time something else and then the next time something else. And then, you know, on and on and on. That's what plus equals will do. So, okay, let's get rid of that. And that should do it. So this will create our password. Now let's output password to the screen. So remember down here, this is our entry box where we want the password to end up on the screen. So let's go password entry dot insert. We wanna insert this into position zero. And what do we wanna insert? Well, whatever this ends up being. So we could just paste that in there. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. So we could type in five, generate strong password. Uh-oh, messed up here. Let's see, what did we do? Local variable, my password, reference before assignment. So let's see, my password. Oh, well, there we go misspelled my password. All right, let's give this another try. Bring this over here, five, generate password. One, two, three, four, five. We do it again, five, again. And we can see we're getting different characters. We're getting lowercase things. We're getting uppercase things. We're getting numbers. Uh, so if we go 50, that's the nice thing about this entry box. We can get this whole thing even though it's it's not stretching off the screen. So that's cool. Okay, so this is working. Now let's get rid of this entry box. Let's make it look invisible before we move forward. So that's pretty simple. We just come down here to our password entry and where we set the font, we can also set the border to zero. We don't want any border around it. And we want the background color to equal system button face. And that's just the default system color, right? So now if we run this guy again, we can see it looks like that's no longer there, but if we type in something, we can see it pops up and we can see it's still like this. I can hit control and C on my keyboard at the same time, the control C, command C if you're on a Mac, that will copy it. If we come back here, for instance, and paste it in, we can see eight two slash, see it ends in eight two slash, so we can in fact copy it that way. But we also wanna create this copy to clipboard button that works too, so let's knock that out real quick. So let's head back over to our code and let's go copy to clipboard. And up here, let's really quickly comment, generate random strong password. Okay, so down here, how do we how do we copy things to the clipboard? I think we've done this before when we created a text editor. We just set root. And then the first thing we wanna do is clear the clipboard. So if there's something already been copied to the clipboard, we wanna get rid of that. So we just go clipboard, underscore clear, and that's a function. So let's go clear the clipboard, and then copy to clipboard. To do that, we just go root dot clipboard underscore append. And what do we want to append? Well, whatever's in our entry box, that's this guy right here. So that's just password underscore entry dot get, and that's a function. So you have your little parentheses, guys, and that's really all there is to it. So Let's run this one more time, make sure that worked. So let's generate a 20 character strong password. Boom, there it is. 
We can come over here. Oh, we don't even have to highlight anything. We could just say copy to clipboard. Now you might want to pop up a little message that says that was successfully copied to the clipboard. I'll leave that to you. I've done pop up boxes in many videos. Check the playlist if you don't know how to do that. That's a simple thing. Whenever you click the copy to clipboard thing, you'll just run your pop up box little message. So, okay, we've copied it to clipboard. Remember it ends in bracket S and then square bracket. So come back over here and right click and paste. And we see bracket S and square bracket. So it looks like, yep, starts with FTR. Confirm that. Yep, FTR. So that copied it successfully. Now if we generate another one, let's, well, we again, we don't have to highlight it at all. We could just click copy to clipboard. Now this one ends in Q. So let's come back over here and make sure it worked a second time. Yep, there it is. Ends in Q. Okay. So a fun little app, very easy to do, but a couple of interesting things, converting things to characters using random numbers. That's a little interesting thing. You could probably use that for all kinds of weird stuff if you put your mind to it. Creating this sort of invisible looking entry box. That's one of my favorite hacks with Kinter. So we could have used a label, but like you know, you can't highlight a label like this. We still could have copied it from the clipboard with the button, but I also like the ability to just be able to drag this and hit control C on your keyboard to copy if you wanted to and the entry box lets us do that. And uh, yeah, fun little app. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, so you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.